thought of being a church guy. A lot of that. But it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Asano from Osaka University, who will be speaking about interfacial magnetohydrodynamic instability in laser plasmas. Please. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Takayoshi Sano from Osaka University. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to the conference. And today, I'll talk about uh, interfacial instability, especially lift my mesh cocoon instability, including the effect of magnetic field. So the method, our method are MHD simulations and laser experiment. So here is uh, our collaborators for the theory side and the experimental side. The laser experiment is, is a collaboration with the French group. So for the laser experiment, we use the uh, Gecko laser in Osaka University. So this is basically the open facility, so anybody here can apply the proposal to use this facility. Okay, so this is the outline of this talk. And uh, first, I'll talk about the background of my research, why RMI, why magnetic field. And then the, I'll talk about the three effects of the magnetic field on the interfacial instability. One is the suppression of the instability by strong magnetic field. And the second one is the field amplification by turbulent motion. And the last one is the effect of the anisotropic thermal conductivity. So the background. So the RMI-driven turbulence plays an important role in various plasma phenomena. So one example is the astrophysical plasma. So astrophysical plasma is basically magnetized. And the interaction between the supernova shock and the inhomogeneous interstellar medium, that is a quite similar situation to the Lichtman mesh instability, and which can give an origin of the interstellar turbulence, and also it could help the amplification of magnetic field of the interstellar field. So another example is the inertial confinement fusion. So the, for the implosion process, the mitigation of the mixing by interfacial instability is quite a crucial problem. So the, and also the, for control the implosion and the inclusion of the external magnetic field is seriously discussed now. So now it is very important to understand the lift my mesh of instability or interfacial instability with magnetic field. So, and also it is good timing for the magnetized laser plasma because the generation of Q Tesla, the strong field, magnetic field, has been achieved by high power lasers. So the strong magnetic field is now available in laser experiment. So I listed here the several methods to generate the strong field actually done by using Gecko laser. And one example is a capacitor coil. So the, for this capacitor coil, the, the about kilotesla order magnetic field are generated for nanosecond time scale. So kilotesla is about a three order of magnitude larger than the permanent magnet. So now this kind of strong field is available laser in laser experiment. <clears throat> So the, in terms of the lift my mesh cocoon instability, there are many beautiful results of the room temperature experiment, like this. But instead, the laser experiment can treat the high energy density plasma. The advantage of that is uh, it could generate the high Mach number shock. And also, it's a plasma flow, so that we can uh, examine the effect of the magnetic field. And for the laser plasma lift my mesh instability, the, there are two kinds. The one is the so-called ablative RM type instability, and another is a classical type of RMI. So in this talk, I just focus on the classical type of lift my mesh instability of the heavy to light configuration. And the key ingredient of the lift my mesh instability is a shock wave and the corrugated contact discontinuity. So this is a minimum setup of the rich my mesh instability. It's called the single mode analysis. The, when the incident shock 
hit the corrugated contact discontinuity, then we can see the growth of the mushroom shaped spike in density distribution. The driving engine of the instability is the vortex D deposited at the corrugated interface. This figure shows the images around the near the contact discontinuity just after the interaction. So when the incident shock hits the corrugated interface, then the uh, reflected shock and transmitted shock start to travel from the interface. If the interface is corrugated, then the shock surface is also rippled. So because of the obliqueness of this shock, the tangential flow is generated by refraction motion at the oblique shock interface here. So that generates the tangential flow. And this is the origin of the vorticity at the interface, and that drives the instability. So then the linear growth velocity is strongly coupled with the, this tangential velocity. So the, this is characteristic of the instability. The Lichtman mesh instability is a linear growth with time, not exponential. And it occurs without gravity. And it's unstable for both light to heavy or heavy to light configuration. So any kind of, any size of the uh, atom number could be unstable for the Lichtman mesh instability. So there are some formula predicting the linear growth rate, a growth velocity of the instability. So in this talk, we adopt the Bochuk and Nishihara's formula. That is given by this equation. The first term is derived from the tangential velocity. And the second term is, becomes important uh, when the shock Mach number is very large. So this term includes the effect of the sound wave propagation in between the interface and shock surface. So compared with the simple formula, so like this, so the, those are typically given by the atom number and also the interface velocity, the Bojack model gives a lower velocity compared to the simple model because of the compressive effect. So we use this formula in this analysis. So the, there are three important effects of magnetic field on the instability. That is shown by the simulation and the experiment. The first one is the suppression of the Richman mesh instability growth by a strong magnetic field. And the second one is the amplification of magnetic field by turbulent motion. The third one is the energy confinement due to the anisotropic thermal conduction. So I'll talk about these three effects in this talk. OK, so first one is the suppression of Lichtenmeyer mesh instability. This uh, is uh, studied by many authors. And I studied this by MRC simulations. So this is the basic equation uh, for the simulation. That is the standard idea MHD equation. And for the MHD scheme, I use the Gordon's type grid-based scheme with an approximate MHD ribbon solver to capture the strong shock. So initial setup for RMI is characterized just by four parameters. So this is a, uh, single mode analysis in 2D, and which has four non dimensional parameters. Those are Mach number of the incident shock, and density jump, and corrugation amplitude at the interface. And the last one is the magnetic field strength, which is given by plasma beta. So, lift my mesh growth can be reduced if the magnetic field is larger than the critical value. So this figure shows the MHD simulation result. So left one is unstable, and right one is stabilized by magnetic field. So in many cases, MHD phenomena, 
the plasma beta gives the criterion. Then how about this case? So actually, the, the unstable case is the initial beta is unity, and the stable case is 10. So which means relatively stronger field is unstable for this specific case. So it seems not so simple. And actually, the critical strengths depend on the Mach number of the incidence shot. So this figure shows the boundary between unstable model and stabilized model in the initial parameter space of Mach number and field strengths. So the boundary is depending on the Mach number, okay? So then, what determines the critical value? So it turns out the key process is the extraction of the vorticity from the interface. For the, for the hydro case, the vorticity deposited at the interface stay there and drive the instability. So during the growth of the Richtmeier mesh instability, the vorticity always associated with the contact surface for hydro case. However, so if the magnetic field exists, the vorticity travel away from the interface by alpha wave, wave. The, they cannot stay here, there. So this is a snapshot of the density distribution and the vorticity distribution. So vortex seat blue one here is not associated with the contact surface for this case. And also, uh, instead, it associates with the kink of the feed line, right? So this vortex seat is moving away from the interface with the alpha band wave. So for this model, so we could not see any growth of the rich mesh instability. So we can say the stability criterion should be determined by the competition between the alpha wave for the extraction of the vorticity and growth velocity. So to see this, we define the alpha number or alpha Mach number for Richtmeier mesh instability, which is defined by the ratio between the growth velocity to the alpha velocity. So here, for the growth velocity, we use a Wojciak model here. So this number is determined by the initial condition. So I plotted the nonlinear outcome of the MHC simulation in uh, as a function of this alpha Mach number, actually the inverse of the alpha Mach number, which is proportional to B here. So then we can see the clear critical value for this number. It's about 10 for alpha number. So if magnetic field is larger than this boundary, the blue one is always suppressed by magnetic field. But the red one is unstable. We can see the unstable growth in the simulation. The interesting part is this boundary number 10 is independent of Mach number and density ratio and the perturbation amplitude and also the field direction. So it looks very robust criteria. So this is the MHC simulation result. And the same result, same conclusion can be uh, obtained by the current vortex seat model, the seat model. So for this model, the Matsuoka uh, talked about this uh, yesterday. So I don't touch in detail here. But in this model, the it model said the alpha number is key quantity to distinguish the unstable growth and stable oscillation as a surface alpha wave. So this condition determines the, the nonlinear fate of the Richtmeier mesh instability in magnetic field. So the critical field strength 
uh, for the suppression in laser plasma is estimated as about 10 tesla. So the, using this critical value, we can uh, calculate the critical B, and which where we assume the solid density, one gram per C, and the gross velocity uh, for uh, a few kilometers per second. This is typical size. So that gives 10 tesla. So 10 tesla is now is available in laser experiments. So this critical uh, formula will be test, test experimentally in the near future. So that will be very interesting topics. So this was the suppression. So let's move on to the second part. That is the amplification of magnetic field by turbulent motion. For this topic, first I will talk about the simulation result and then uh, introduce the laser experiment to this motivation. So the theoretically, so this is a simulation. So the ambient magnetic field can be amplified but dramatically by Littmann mesh of motions. This is the, non uh, the snapshot of the nonlinear phase of the Littmann mesh of instability for density here and field strength and field lines here. So in the field strength distribution, you can see the localized filamentary structure and strong magnetic field region. So, and the amplitude, amplification factor is more than 100. So this is, this instability amplify the magnetic fields very efficiently. So amplification is caused by the stretching term in induction equation. So this panel shows the time evolution of the uh, maximum growth, uh, maximum field strength in the, in the computational domain. So this is a growing phase. And the growth rate here is identical to the stretching rate of the interface. So that shows the stretching is key process for the amplification of magnetic field in this situation. And field amplification uh, is independent of the initial field direction. So this figure shows the time evolution of the maximum field strength for three different initial field direction cases. So those are the magnetic initial field is uh, parallel to the interface and perpendicular to the interface, and the last one is the oblique case. For three cases, we can see the efficient amplification in the simulation. So, and also, we found that the saturation level of magnetic field is independent of any parameters such as Mach number, density jump, and fluctuation amplitude. So then what determines the final size of the magnetic field? So the maximum magnetic field strength is limited by actually growth velocity of least my mesh instability. This figure shows the time evolution of the maximum magnetic field strength is the same one, but now it's normalized by the, the turbulent kinetic energy. So the upper limit of this figure is about unity, so which means the saturation level of the field strength is of the order of turbulent kinetic energy. Again, this uh, result is consistent with the current vortex seat model. So MHC simulation and current vortex seat model gives the same result for the saturation amplitude. So magnetic field amplification can be seen in also 3D. So I put the 3D perturbation, the simple model, the, just the cosine times cosine here, then see the uh, nonlinear evolution of the Littmann mesh instability. So this is a 3D picture of the density isocontour here, and this is the magnetic energy distribution, and this figure shows the time history of the maximum magnetic field in the simulation in 
2D and 3D cases. So the solid line is a 3D, and dotted lines are uh, 2D cases. And simply speaking, for the 3D case, it is also amplified. Magnetic field is amplified by the unstable motion. And I haven't done many simulations for 3D, but for this particular case, the 3D gives a larger amplification, amplification factor compared to the 2D case. That would be because this, this kind of small structure can be seen in 3D. That uh, enhances the stretching rate. So that would be the origin of this difference, just by factor three or something. OK, so this is the theory part. Then the, to confirm this phenomena, uh, we just started the laser experiment by using gecko laser. But it is still preliminary, so I just show the kind of status of our uh, attempt. So classical RMI experiment using the high power laser uh, has been carried out by many groups. So they are used the Nova lasers, Omega lasers, Nike lasers, and the, most of the case, the, the boundary, the contact surface are made by, made between the, uh, the metal and foam or CH and foam. And they usually use the X-ray diagnostics to see the evolution of the, the perturbation. So compared to those experiments, our trial is uh, like this. So, so I use the boundary between the CH and gas, so the large density jump case. And we include the magnetic field as a seed field. And also we use the optical measurement like this to see the longer time evolution. So this is the setup of our experiment. So here is the target. So the interface is made by the corrugated CH target here and ambient N2 gas of 5 tor. So then the density jump is huge. It's 10 to the minus 5. And the, uh, the perturbation, so the wavelength is about 150 micron, and the, uh, the amplitude is about 7.5 micron, so the, its ratio is about 5% of the wavelength. So this is the, our interface. So then we add the magnetic field here by using the permanent magnet. So the size is just a 0.2 tesla at the target. So this is too weak to affect the dynamics. So the motivation of this experiment is to see the amplification. So we just start very weak seed field. So the, then we shoot, uh, we radiate the laser here. So the shock wave is generated by uh, direct driving. The direct laser drive. So you use a gecko laser, and the pulse duration is about 2.5. And that at the beginning, the, the shock wave formed inside of the CH, and it propagates towards the rear side, and it, it hit the rear side. It generates or excites the Richtman mesh instability. So before the RMX, RMI experiment, we, uh, we estimate the shock, tangent, uh, transmitted shock velocity and interface velocity by using a flat target. This is an optical radiography. Uh, so using, by using the flat target, we can see the transmitted shock front and the contact surface here. So then we can estimate or calculate, measure the, sh the velocity of these surfaces. And the, this graph shows the uh, velocities as a function of the intensity of the laser. So we just use the power of heat fit 
then the, it gives the power index is 0 0.56 to the intensity. I use this for the uh, estimation of the growth velocity later. So the evolution of the rich mesh for growth observed successfully by optical measurement. So this is a snapshot taken uh, before the laser shot. So here is the target, and this line corresponds to the 5500 micron, and our fluctuation amplitude is about 10 microns. So we couldn't resolve that, but here is the modulated, modulated surface. And after the 60 nanoseconds later, so then the, we can see the finger-like structure, which is caused by my mesh curve or the later uh, instability growth. So the wavelength is exactly the same as the initial perturbation wavelengths. And the amplitude is now more than 100, uh, a few hundred microns. So which means the initial is just a 10 micron. The amplification factor is huge. So uh, our experiment uses heavy to light configuration. So the, the phase reversal at the very beginning was observed the past gecko experiment with the same target configuration. So in our case, we couldn't observe, but uh, the, the phase should be changed at the beginning. So then, uh, growth velocity of the surface fluctuation can be uh, evaluated from the snapshot of the fingers. So we calculate, uh, we measure the, the length of the finger uh, as a function of time and derive the growth velocity. This is the result of the growth velocity, which is ranging from two kilometer to six kilometer in our experiment. And then compare with the numerical models. So we of Bojak Nishihara model. Uh, assuming the density jump is a 10 to the minus five and the Mach number is five, then the, they gave this formula as a uh, gross velocity. So it requires uh, interface velocity here. So I uh, put this, put here uh, with the experimentally observed uh, interface velocity as a function of the intensity, then the we can have the uh, growth velocity of this model. So this solid line is uh, the Bojak Nishihara's prediction. And red circles are our experimental data. So obviously, the, our experimental data has much larger growth velocity than the, this model. So which would be because the Lady Taylor growth. I roughly calculated, estimated the growth rate of the uh, growth time scale of the Lady Taylor instability in this situation. It's about uh, order of 10 nanoseconds. So the, uh, the contamination of the Lady Taylor instability must be considered to this analysis. So there's a future works. As I said, uh, so this is this experiment is motivated to the amplification of magnetic field. So the most important measurement should be the magnetic field size of the magnetic field. But so far, we couldn't uh, success, succeed in the measurement of the amplified magnetic field. So the, this would be the most important future work. And also, we have to consider the, uh, both the Lady Taylor and the lichtenstein meshkov effect in this analysis. So, so this, the last one, this, this is the last view graph. The last one is the anisotropic thermal conduction. So the, this is the result of the Gecko experiment. It is published uh, already. So the, I just say the only the important conclusion, the anisotropic thermal conduction affects the flow dynamics even when the plasma beta is large. That is, is important result of this paper. Okay, so this is a summary of this talk. The, the, we are investigating the uh, MHD evolution of rich my mesh instability by using the simulations and, and laser experiments. And there are three interesting features of MHD RMI, and the one is a strong magnetic field can reduce the growth of the instability, and there the alpha number is very important. And the second one is the turbulent motion 
uh, driven by the, uh, uh, instability can amplify a magnetic field. And the last one is the anthropic thermal conduction can affect the hydrodynamic flow even when the plasma beta is much larger than unity. That is, thank you very much. Okay, this paper is open for questions.